All right, thank you guys. My name is Brock Page, and I do sports picks for free right here on YouTube. And if you find yourself really enjoying this Major League Baseball video here today on, uh, on Thursday, May 13th, please feel free to give it a thumbs up by smashing that like button. And if you're new here and you haven't hit that subscribe button yet, please feel free to do that as well. I greatly appreciate it. Now, if you want to see which one of these free YouTube picks I'm actually betting on personally here today, don't forget to check me out on my website at patreon.com slash rockpage. Now, we're currently hitting at 70% in our last 20 extra daily pick tier package plays on that Patreon page. And if you want to access today's extra daily pick, it's only going to cost you just $2.99. We're also hitting at 69% in our last 90 extra daily pick tier package plays in that very same category. That's nearly 70% in that tier over the past three months. Certainly some long-term uh, success there. Now, we currently have over 1,175 members who are signed up and active on that site. And if you want to join those folks and get in on the action, link for that page is in the description section below. And once again, that's patreon.com slash Brock Page. And with that, let's go ahead and dive into some action. Uh, only skipping one game today. Uh, we're skipping the noon game. But uh, we're going to start with the Phillies taking on the Nationals, 105 Eastern first pitch. Now, the Washington Nationals are minus about 10. Totals eight, juice to the over. Patrick Corbin for the Nats. Zach Eflin for the Phils. Eflin's looked real good this season. 2-1 on record with a 3.38 ERA and a 1.13 whip. Now, the Phillies are on a two-game winning streak, both of those victories coming against Washington. They also got the W in seven out of their last nine. The Phillies currently have the third most wins in the National League. They're taking on a national squad who's six games below 500. They find themselves in last place in the NL East. Washington's in the bottom three in scoring uh, on average per game. And they're also averaging just 3.2 runs per contest at Nationals Park. Now, Patrick Corbin's also looked shaky on the bump. Just 1-3 with a 7.36 ERA and a 1.53 whip. When it comes to the total on this one, Washington saw 13 out of their 50, uh, I'm sorry, 13 out of 18 home games stay under the line. And that's are officially 69% to the under overall for the season. I'm going to lean toward... The Philadelphia Phillies minus 110 in the under eight runs. Next game, Royals Tigers 110 Eastern start time. The Detroit Tigers are minus 120, numbers nine flat. Don't see uh, the Tigers uh, favored much. Uh, Spencer Turnbull for Detroit, Daniel Lynch for Kansas City. But as bad as Lynch and the KC Royals have looked here recently, we're still looking at a Kansas City squad who has a winning road record. This Kansas City lineup is also in the top five in uh, fewest strikeouts at the plate. They're taking on a Detroit squad who's still tied for the fewest wins in the majors. They're currently 12-24 and 24 for the season, and they rank dead last in scoring. Now, the Tigers average just 3.4 runs a game, and they strike out nearly 11 times per contest as well. Spencer Turnbull comes into today's start with a 1-2 and two record and a 474 ERA. Now, total-wise, the Tigers are 11-6 and six to the under at Comerica Park. Kansas City's seen nearly 70% of their road games stay under the line as well. I'm going to lean toward the underdog Kansas City Royals, plus 105, and the under nine runs. Next contest, Cardinals-Brewers, 140 Eastern Standard Time. The Milwaukee Brewers are minus 140, number six and a half. Corbin Burns for the Brewers, Jack Flaherty for St. Louis. Now, Flaherty's a perfect 6-0 with a 2.93 ERA and a .94 whip. The Cardinals are still in first place in the NL Central with a 22-15 record. This Cardinals uh, lineup is also in the top five in the league in road scoring. Nolan Arenado has hit six homers and knocked in 23 for St. Louis. Arenado's also got 19 extra base hits. Meanwhile, Dylan Carlson's scored 23 times already and has 56 total bases. Now, they're taking on a Milwaukee team who lost seven out of their last 10. And they strike out 10.2 times a game. 
This Brewers lineup also ranks in the bottom five in hits. Now, total-wise, 11 out of Milwaukee's 18 games at Miller Park got over the line. Meanwhile, the Cardinals are 10-7 and to the over when they bat first. I'm going to lean toward the St. Louis Cardinals plus one and a half and the over six and a half runs. Next ball game, Twins versus the White Sox, 210 Eastern first pitch. The Chicago White Sox are minus 140, total seven and a half juice to the under. Lance Lynn for the White Sox, Michael Pineda for Minnesota. But as good as Pineda's look this year, we're looking at a Twins team who's tied with Detroit for the fewest wins in Major League Baseball. Minnesota's just 12-22 and 22 overall for this season. And they've gotten the W in just 6 of 17 road games. The Twins lineup is averaging nearly double-digit strikeouts a game when they travel. They're taking on a White Sox club who's got Lance Lynn on the bump for him today. 3-1 record with a 152 ERA and a .98 whip. Chicago's in first place in the AL Central with a 21-13 record. Their pitching staff is also in the top three in the league in fewest runs allowed at home. Now, total-wise, Chicago's last four straight all got over the total of seven and a half runs. Seven out of their last ten contests got over that number as well. Meanwhile, on the other side of things, Minnesota saw their last four straight get over the seven and a half themselves. Minnesota's officially 13 and four to the over when they bat first. I'm going to lean toward the Chicago White Sox minus 140 in the over seven and a half runs. Next matchup, it is going to be Giants versus the Pirates, 635 Eastern start time. The San Francisco Giants are minus 160, totals eight. Anthony DiSclefani for San Francisco, Will Crow for Pittsburgh. The Crows walked nine batters in just over 15 innings pitched. He comes into today's contest with a 402 ERA and a 1.34 whip. The Pirates are in last place in the NL Central, 417 win percentage thus far in the season. They've gotten the W in just six of 15 home games. And their lineup's in the bottom three in scoring on average per game. They're taking on a giant club who went 4-1 straight up in their last five, 12-6 in their last 18 run line plays as the away team as well. The San Francisco pitching staff is in the top five in hits allowed, and they give up just three and a half runs a game. Anthony DiSclefani is 2-1 with a 2-4-0 ERA and a .94 whip. When it comes to the total in this one, five out of San Francisco's last eight ball games got over the total of eight runs. The Giants are officially 10-8 and eight to the over as the road team. Meanwhile, the Pirates have gone 60% to the over at PNC Park this season. I'm going to lean toward the San Francisco Giants, minus 160 in the over eight runs. Next matchup, it is going to be A's versus the Red Sox, 7.10 p.m. East. The Boston Red Sox are minus 120, totals nine flat. Garrett Richardson for the Bo Sox, Sean Manaya for Oakland. The Manaya is 3-1 with a 3.07 ERA and a 1.07 whip. The lefties also struck out 43 batters in just 41 innings of work. The A's are currently on a two-game winning streak, four and one straight up in their last five. They've also won 10 of 14 on the road this year, and they have sole possession of first place in the AL West. They're currently two and a half games ahead of the Astros in the standings. They're taking on a Boston club who's on a three-game losing streak, and they scored just four total runs during that span. Now, Boston also has a losing home record this year, and their pitching staff is in the bottom 10 in runs allowed at home. Garrett Richards comes into today's start with a 4.54 ERA and a 1.46 whip. When it comes to the total in this one, Boston's last four straight all stayed under the total of nine runs. Meanwhile, the A's are officially 10-4 and four to the under as the road team. I'm going to lean toward the underdog Oakland A's plus a dollar in the under nine runs. Next contest I have for you, it is going to be Yankees versus the Rays. And that's going to be a 7-10 Eastern first pitch. The New York Yankees are minus 135, totals eight flat. Jamison Tyone for the Yankees, Rich Hill for Tampa Bay. The Hill's gotten just one win on the season after 31 innings of work. He comes into today's start with double-digit walks and a 5-17 ERA. Now the Rays also have the second-fewest home wins in the entire American League. 
They're just 7-12 and 12 straight up at the Trop, and their lineup strikes out more than any other team in the game. Now, even worse than that, the Rays are currently dead last in the majors in home scoring. They're taking on a New York squad who's on a four-game winning streak. And in addition to that, they also got the W in 11 out of their last 14 ball games. Certainly a nice stretch for New York after a very slow start to the uh, 2021 campaign. Now, this Yankee pitching staff has the most strikeouts per game on average in the league. They also allow just 3.4 runs per contest on the road. Jamison Tyone struck out 34 batters in just over 28 innings of work. When it comes to the total in this one, 11 out of New York's 16 road games stayed under the line, 23 and 13 to the under for the entire season. Meanwhile, the Rays are 12 and 7 to the under as the home team. I'm going to lean toward the New York Yankees minus 135 in the under eight flat. Next matchup. It is going to be Rangers versus the Astros, 810 Eastern Standard Time. The Houston Astros are minus $2, totals 8.5. Christian Javier for Houston, Mike fulton for Texas. Now, Fulte's just 1-3 with a 4-5-0 ERA. This Ranger pitching staff is in the bottom three in hits allowed. And they currently find themselves on a two-game skid. They're taking on a Houston club who won five out of their last seven themselves. They currently lead the majors in hits. Yuli Gurriel has 44 hits on the season. He's batting 333 with seven homers along with 30 RBI, which is actually in the top five in the bigs. Meanwhile, Jordan Alvarez has hit seven home runs himself along with 22 ribbies. The outfielder is currently batting 347 at the plate, which is fourth in the majors. This Astros lineup also strikes out, uh, they strike out less than any other team in uh, baseball. When it comes to the total on this one, Houston's 22 and 15 to the over for the entire year. Texas is 11 and 8 to the over when they bat first. I'm going to lean toward the Houston Astros minus one and a half and the over eight and a half runs. Next ball game. It is going to be Reds versus the Rockies, 840 Eastern Standard Time. The Cincinnati Reds are minus 145, totals 11. Luis Castillo for the Reds, Chichi Gonzalez for Colorado. But as bad as Colorado's been this year, they still have a winning home record, and they've gone 12 and 9 against the number at Coors Field. And of course, when I'm referring to the number, uh, I am referring to the run line. Now, the Rockies are in the top five in home scoring, top 10 in home hits. Trevor Story's batting 278 with 21 RBI and 16 extra base hits. Meanwhile, Ryan McMahon has hit eight homers and knocked in 23. They're taking on a Reds club who struggles on the road. They've won just 7 of 17 as the away team. They failed to cash in on the run line 10 times during that span. Now, the Reds are averaging just three and a half runs a game when they travel. They've got Luis Castillo on the bump here today, who I'm not going to sugarcoat it. He's been pretty bad to start the season. The righties just 1-4 and four in the year with a 6.42 ERA and a 1.63 whip. When it comes to the number in this one, uh, Cincinnati did get, uh, they did go 11-6 and six of the over in their 17 road games. They're officially 23-11 and 11 of the over for the entire season. So I'm going to lean toward the Colorado Rockies plus one and a half and the over 11 runs. Next matchup, Marlins, D-backs, 940 Eastern start time. The Miami Marlins are minus 130, numbers eight and a half. Trevor Rogers for Miami, Merrill Kelly for Arizona. But as bad as Kelly's looked, Arizona's beat, uh, beat Miami in two out of the series three games already. The D-backs also have a winning home record. And they're currently in the top three in the majors in home scoring. Carson Kelly's batting 333 with six homers and 19 RBI. The catcher currently has an OPS of 1.097. Meanwhile, Eduardo Escobar's hit seven home runs and knocked in 19 himself. They're taking on a Miami club who lost four out of their last five. The Marlins have also been victorious in just eight of 19 road games, and their hitters are striking out nearly 11 times a game when they travel. Uh, now, another thing to add here uh, with regard to this ball game, uh, Miami's just one game ahead of the last place Nationals in the NL East, so uh, they're kind of... Uh, Swimming with the fish, pun intended, 
there. But anyway, total wise, Miami's 11 and 0. Uh, they're not 11 and 0 to the over when they travel, but uh, they have seen their fair share of overs when they travel, and they're also 20 and 16 to the over for the entire season. Meanwhile, the D-backs on nine out of 14 games at Chase Field get over the line themselves. I'm going to lean toward the Arizona Diamondbacks plus a buck ten and the over eight and a half. And that, guys, we're going to jump into our next and final matchup, Indians versus the Mariners. And that's going to be a 10-10 Eastern first pitch. The Cleveland Indians are minus a buck fifteen, total seven and a half flat. Zach Plesak for Cleveland, Logan Gilbert for Seattle. Now, Gilbert's making his MLB debut here this evening against Cleveland, and perhaps he can give these Mariners a little spark because they're right in the middle of a four-game losing streak, just 3-7 and seven straight up in their last 10. Now, this Mariner lineup is dead last in the league and hits on average per contest. They're averaging just 3.8 runs per game at T-Mobile Park. They're taking on a Cleveland squad who's on a three-game winning streak themselves, 8-1 and one straight up in their last nine. The Indians are currently six games above 500 right now, and they find themselves just one game behind the White Sox for first place in the division. Cleveland's really been anchored by this pitching staff. They lead the majors in strikeouts on the road. They're also allowing just 3.6 runs a game. Zach Plesak comes into today's start with a 3.83 ERA and a 1.03 whip. When it comes to the total in this one, Cleveland's last two straight stayed under the total of seven and a half runs. Four out of their last five also stayed under that number. Meanwhile, Seattle's officially 10 and seven of the under as the home team. I'm going to lean toward the Cleveland Indians minus a buck 15 and the under seven and a half. With that, guys, that's going to do it for me. Don't forget to check me out on Patreon. If you guys decide to get a package here today on my Patreon website, just keep in mind, the website's going to bill you the day you sign up and then the first of every month following that. So if you do end up getting a package here today, just keep in mind, you're going to get access to that content all the way through the end of May. But most importantly, guys, got to thank you for joining me right here on YouTube. Really hope you enjoyed all this great free content, all this great free information. And with that said, happy Thursday to you. Best of luck to you. And I look forward to seeing you later on today on my website at patreon.com slash Brock page.